Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video today we're starting off part 6, unit 2 of our pre-calculus series, trigonometry of right angles. Now when we talk about right angles we're usually going to be talking about a right angled triangle. So let me go ahead and, and put one of those down here so we can take a look at what's going on. Now, of course, we know that the interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees, or pi radians. So if one of these angles is a right angle, you can see that I've chosen this angle here to be my right angle, then it's going to be the only right angle, right? We can only ever have one right angle, because if this is 90 degrees, and we had another right angle, let's say this was also 90 degrees, well then this would have to be 0 degrees. So we'd actually just have a line, wouldn't we? But then this wouldn't be a right angle, and neither would this, and we get a contradiction. So know that in any triangle, if we have a right angle, we're going to have only one right angle. Now, when we talk about the trigonometry of right angles, we're going to choose one of the other angles, one of the other acute angles, and they'll both be acute angles, and we can choose either one, but I'm going to choose this one for now. This will be my theta. And we can define some things uh, based on this angle theta on my right triangle. Now first, I'm going to go ahead and label the sides of these triangles with respect to this angle theta. If I choose this angle to be my theta, we say that this short side here on the bottom is my adjacent side. This side over here on the right, the other short side, is going to be opposite. Right, so this is my adjacent short side of the triangle, adjacent to my angle. This is my short side of the triangle, opposite of my angle. And the last side of the triangle, whatever the longest side is that's opposite my right angle, that will always be called my hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Alright, now we have a nifty little acronym that we can use now that I've labeled this triangle called SOKATOA. SOKATOA. And I've labeled it with the same colors that I've labeled uh, this adjacent, opposite, and a hypotenuse. And the reason is that we can use this right triangle to make definitions for our basic trig functions um, in a different way than we did in the past uh, with the unit circle, right? So I have sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. Now I'm only going to use SOKOTOA to define these three. We know that, that uh, my other three trig functions are uh, kind of defined at the same time. When I define sine, cosine, and tangent, remember we just take the reciprocal of sine to get cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Now I'm going to fill in some gaps here. We have SO, these first three letters of my SOKOTOA, that means sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in here. Opposite over hypotenuse. The second part says cosine, this ka, says cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is going to be my adjacent over my hypotenuse. And this last three letters, toa, that means tangent, is opposite over adjacent. Alright, so what I've done here is I've defined sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle to be the ratio of two of the sides of a triangle that's formed by that angle and a right angle. Right? Now this works for the triangle no matter how long these sides are. Right? With a little bit of review, we know that similar triangles, if we have um, this property in triangles called similarity, where if all of the angles are the same, then all of the sides are going to be in proportion to each other. Those proportions are going to be the same no matter how big the triangle is, as long as those angles, those interior angles are all the same. So if I know one of my angles, and I know that the one of the other angles is a right angle, well then the third angle is going to be the same no matter how big or small I make this triangle, right? So we can define these uh, sine, cosine, and tangent based on these proportions. And in the next video, I'm going to connect this back to the unit circle, and we'll see that these definitions are actually the same as the definitions that we used 
um, back in part 5 when we define these trig functions um, based on lengths around the unit circle. But first let's have an example. Um, uh, before we end this video uh, I want to give you an example so we can really illustrate what's going on here. Uh, let's say example, let's say that cosine of theta is equal to 3 fourths and I want to find all the others. Well, the way that I'm going to find all my other trig functions is I'm going to make a right triangle. I'll go ahead and draw a right triangle out over here. And I need to, we, we, we see that I've made this my right angle. I need to denote one of these as my theta. I'll go ahead and make this my theta here. Now the problem says cosine of theta equals 3 fourths. Now I can make any right triangle that I want as long as the proportion of the adjacent side of theta over the hypotenuse is 3 fourths. Well the easiest triangle that we can make that has that, um, that, has that proportion is going to be if I just make my adjacent side 3 and I make my hypotenuse 4. Okay, so now I first thing I need to do is I need to solve out the other side of this right triangle. I'm going to figure out what this side is over here, and then I'm going to be able to use that to find all of my other um, all of my other functions. So we need to use uh, our Pythagorean identity, right? We know that. Um, sorry, not Pythagorean identity, but um, um, my Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we have this theorem with right triangles. We know that um, the, the square of the first small side plus the square of the second small side equals the square of the hypotenuse, right? We, it's commonly referred to as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we'll see soon that the Pythagorean formula is actually very closely related. Um, the Pythagorean theorem is actually very closely related to those Pythagorean identities we've been talking about. But I have 3 squared, and let's call this other side x, 3 squared plus x squared is equal to 4 squared. So in other words, x squared is equal to 16 minus, and subtract this 3 squared over here, it's 9. 16 minus 9 is 7. So I have x is equal to the square root of 7. And I'm just going to go ahead and say that x is positive square root of 7 because it's the side of a triangle, right? We can't have a negative side of a triangle. That just doesn't make sense. So I have my x here. This side over here is the square root of 7. So now we can very easily go through using SOHCAHTOA and find the values of the rest of these trig functions. My sine, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. We found my opposite here to be square root of 7. This is going to be square root of 7 over 4. Now from sine, I immediately get that, oh, I'm making mistakes here, huh? Sine of theta. We need an argument here for this sine. I'd immediately get that cosecant of theta, which is equal to the reciprocal of sine, so that's going to be 4 over the square root of 7. We leave it in this form, but uh, just to practice rationalizing that denominator, that's the same as 4 root 7 over 7, isn't it? Now I already have that cosine is 3 fourths, so I can use that information to find secant. I know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's going to be 4 thirds. And finally, we look at tangent. Tangent of theta is going to be the ratio of opposite over adjacent, so my opposite is square root of 7, my adjacent is 3, so I get that tangent of theta is equal to root 7 over 3. And then taking the reciprocal of that, we get that cotangent of theta is equal to 3 over the square root of 7, or rationalizing that denominator, 3 root 7 over 7. All right, so that's SOHCAHTOA, and this is the introduction to uh, trigonometry of right angles. Now in the next video, I'm going to relate this back to the unit circle so we can kind of see how this is all connected, and then we'll, we'll go into uh, some of the special triangles that are going to be helpful for us in the future and uh, problem sets.